Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Thursday the 23rd of December. Now, I've got some pretty interesting data on the spread of Omicron and the symptoms and the risk of hospitalizations with Omicron today. But just before we do that, we're keeping an eye on some critical information and we're watching this on a daily basis. Well, I watch two or three times a day every time there's an update. So this is, uh, this is South Africa. So we see there's... Uh, 9,300 people currently in hospital in South Africa with a positive diagnosis of uh, Omicron, only a little bit higher than the UK, about 2,000 higher than the UK with a similar population. So we see that the hospitals in South Africa are not being flooded with Omicron patients. They are simply not, and we're more than four weeks into this now. Patients on oxygen in all of South Africa for a population of 60 million, 1,329 uh, 1, Altogether, patients on oxygen in the whole country in hospital who have got a positive SARS coronavirus 2 diagnosis, which, as we know, in South Africa is 98% Omicron. So we are not seeing a dire situation develop in South Africa. We're just not. And then one more from this that we're keeping an eye on. This is the one from the UK. We will check. This could have been updated actually by the time we go off this recording. It's updated about now. But hospitalizations with Omicron in the UK currently, that's the number there, 195 out of 7,500. So 7,500 patients in hospital with SARS coronavirus 2, 195 with confirmed Omicron. 18 deaths. We don't know whether these deaths are with or from. That is literally all we know about it at the moment. Now let's go on and look at some of the uh, COVID symptom tracker information now. This is always fascinating to follow. This is more or less live time. Zoe update. This was actually yesterday's update. Actually, just, just to prove it's lifetime, let's just have a look at a, have a quick look at today's. This is today's. So we see over one and a half million people symptomatic in the UK at the moment. Number of new cases are all time high, 151,000. And we can see that the, the dots are further are further apart, aren't they? There's a sharp increase. So a very sharp increase to a prevalence of on the 23rd, which is today, the prevalence figure there is 1549, so one and a half million. Um, always good to get that up to date, bang up to date, basically lifetime data. And of course, first thing I do in the morning, I put my mobile phone on and I, uh, I, I update it. Now, um, these, these are the references for Zoe application. So, 144,000 new daily symptomatic COVID cases in the UK up to the average up to uh, yesterday. It's a lot. In people who've had at least two doses of vaccines, there was 56,000 new daily symptomatic cases. So we are seeing a lot of people who've had two or three doses of vaccine who are emphatically are getting symptomatic COVID-19 believed to be mostly Omicron variant. This is breaking through big time into symptomatic infection. The people that are vaccinated, of course, typically they have a milder illness, they have less symptoms and they're much less likely to be hospitalised. But they're still getting a lot of symptomatic disease. I'm sure a lot are getting asymptomatic disease, but of course, COVID symptom tracker study by definition doesn't pick those up. So 70% of cases uh, uh, in England now are uh, Omicron. We've moved over. The R value is currently 1.2, so we're increasing. The R value in London, which is leading the way, is 1.5. Now, let's just have a look at some, um, some Zoe data now. I think we can see some of that. So these are the new symptomatic cases in the United Kingdom on the 20th of December. These are in doubly vaccinated people, so we can see there's a lot of symptomatic infection and we can see that that's gone up dramatically with the Omicron. So we can see that the symptomatic infections have gone up dramatically in the vaccinated during this time of uh, Omicron. So pretty clear uh, correlation there. This is all people, including a lot who are unvaccinated. So that's, uh, that's new cases in the UK. This one is uh, regional, and the big thing to notice here is this is the London data. So uh, symptomatic cases have shot up in London, and there is no question that where London is leading, the rest of the country is going to follow. This is the pattern that we've predicted for some time now. 
Uh, new cases in the UK on the 19th of December. As we said, the R value is uh, 1.2. So a sharp rise in new daily cases up to, well, as, as we've said, about 140,000. Uh, that, and that's just up to the 19th of December. Incidents by age group. So the 18 to 35s, particularly in London here, are the highest growth in, uh, in number of cases. The more at-risk groups still, thankfully, uh, much lower. Let's look at some of our usual orientation graphics. The new daily confirmed COVID-19 cases per million. And we see that Japan is still doing best of all in the world. Australia, they are going up due to Omicron spreading, particularly in New South Wales, as we said. Canada going up. United States, the Omicron increase in cases is definitely started. France, Ireland, likewise. United Kingdom and Gibraltar. Now, I'll put Gibraltar on here because... Now, the reason I put Gibraltar on there is, as we know, Gibraltar is one of the most highly vaccinated populations in the world. Relatively small population, but the, the vaccination uptakes about 140% from what I remember. And yet we're still seeing all these breakthrough symptomatic infections in Gibraltar. These are breaking through the Omicron infections. The symptomatic infections are breaking through, giving symptomatic infection. Denmark still high. Denmark's actually reached its genomic sequencing capacity. But of course, all these people in Gibraltar that are getting these infections, they're being protected largely from hospitalisation, from severe illness, but they're getting a massive boost. This is a natural immune boost that they're getting from their Omicron exposure. So you could argue that this is potentially could turn out to be the best thing that's ever happened. So we'll see, but that's looking fairly promising. Now going on looking at some more orientation, number of patients in hospital per million with COVID-19, so Canada, Denmark, see Denmark with high case detection but uh, not so high hospitalisation, Ireland, the United Kingdom going up slightly we know, United States has remained high, this is mostly due to Delta in the United States still, but some Omicron effect coming through in France. Estimates of the R value, now this line here is one, so anything below this, the cases are decreasing. Anything above this, they are increasing. So we see that absolutely everywhere has got an R value of above one. So Ireland, United States, France, Japan, even Japan, although it's not showing yet. Uh, Denmark, Canada, United Kingdom and Australia especially. And we see that the R value in Australia there is about, what, 1.5, 1.6 even. So cases increasing in those all of those areas. New daily confirmed COVID-19 cases per million, looking at the South Africa data here. So we see that the cases in South Africa appear to be falling off. So we see there that the cases in South Africa appear to be quite low and appear to be dropping off compared to the United States and the United Kingdom. But we actually believe this is not the case because there's not that much testing going on now in South Africa. So the real numbers are probably still climbing in South Africa. That looks like the most likely scenario. And then we look at weekly new hospital admissions for COVID-19 per million. In terms of admissions, yes, it is going up in South Africa. But as we saw, just over 9,000 for a population of 60 million. Not yet at the Delta level seeing in the United States. New daily confirmed deaths and we see South Africa. Now, the, the case rate in South Africa grossly underrepresents the infections. But the hospitalizations and deaths are accurately recorded. So this is the case. The deaths are going up a little bit in South Africa, but not very much. Still below the UK, still well below the United States. And we believe this is accurate. And of course, this is after over four weeks now of uh, Omicron. And uh, new daily confirmed COVID-19 deaths per million people in South Africa. Well, first wave, second wave, third wave, Omicron wave. So natural variant wave, South Africa beta variant wave, uh, delta variant wave, and now this Omicron wave with much, much lower numbers of uh, deaths. Now, I've had an email from Brian who's explaining the, the testing situation in South Africa, and he does explain that tests are actually quite expensive. So it's about $14 just for a, an over-the-counter lateral flow test, and it's twi twice to three times that for a, for a PCR test. So a lot of people are just using these cheap lateral flow tests. They are testing positive, but then that doesn't go on to the official statistics. 
So we know from Brian and, and from others in South Africa that the number of cases in South Africa is greatly underestimating the number of infections. So the, the Omicron is just rampant in South Africa now, but as we saw, despite very, very high numbers of infections, not, actu not accurately reflected in the cases, still getting relatively low numbers of hospitalisation. Now this data that we've looked at from, from the UK and from Scotland will pad out in time, but so far it remains promising that we will be able to um, cope with this. There will be more hospitalizations, but we may well be over a very short period of time. So that looks like what's happening over the next few weeks. And uh, thank you for watching.